Hebrews chapter 10, beginning in verse 19. And when you have it, just say amen. It reads this way. It says, therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which we consecrated, which he consecrated for us through the veil, that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Someone say faith. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. I'm very grateful that when he cleansed you, he pulled all that evil out of you. That evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Now, this is the part I want you to hold on to. It says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Watch this, verse 25. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another as so much more as you see the day is approaching. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. In other words, come to church. Look at your neighbor and tell him, come to church. Look at your second choice, the one you didn't want to talk to. Look at them. <laughs> and tell them, I want to see you in church. Do not forsake the assembling of ourselves together, but encourage one another. Tonight, I want to take a few moments to talk to you about on a message I've never preached before entitled, the four P's of a powerful church. The four P's of a powerful church. Give your neighbor a high five and you may be seated tonight. How many of you love your church? Tonight, I want to talk about the church. Because the church is so special and the church is so powerful. I believe this. I believe that the church is, is the most pow powerful force in the earth today. More powerful than an army, more powerful than a navy, more powerful than government. God's government, God's kingdom, God's church is the most powerful force in the earth today. And I'll tell you why. Because we have something that the world does not possess. You say, Pastor, what do we have? I'll tell you what we have. We are powerful because within our ranks, we have the power of change. We have the power of change. Someone say change. The Hebrew writer challenges us as believers, look at this, not to forsake the assembly of ourselves. Someone say, come to church. And it's very important, this, this point here, not to forsake the assembly of ourselves. Because how many know when we get together, there's power? See, the reason he says that, and if you really study, is because the enemy has always tried to hinder the assembly of God's people. No matter what he can do, he, he tries every tactic to try to hinder the assembly of God's people. The reality is that Satan, our enemy, fears when the church gets together, Satan fears the church. And what Satan wants to do is he wants to do all he can to keep people out. Are you with me so far? He wants to do all he can to keep people out of the church because he knows that when a people who have a righteous purpose. Am I in the right place tonight? And the people that have a righteous cause and a people that have been endued with power get together. God bless half of you. Let me say it one more time. When the people who've been endued with power get together, how many know we make stuff happen? Come on, give God a praise if you know what I'm talking about. So Satan fears that. And he wants to keep people out, but God wants you and I to get them in. What I believe the Hebrew writer is saying here to us, he's saying, you've got to be unwavering. Look at your neighbor and tell him, be unwavering. In other words, hold on to the promise. Stay close to God. 
Stay close to his promises. And, and here's the key. Stay close to each other. Because we're powerful together. Stay close to each other. See, understand what we carry. I believe the church is powerful, not because we're so great looking. It's powerful because of what we carry. Tell your neighbor, you carry something. Just like the children of Israel carried the Ark of the Covenant, and wherever they went, God gave them the victory. As long as the Ark of the Covenant was in their midst, the, the Red Sea was parted. Come on, the, the Jordan was parted. Miracles begin to happen. So I came to tell you when we are together, we carry what the world does not have. We carry amongst ourselves the revelation of God. Whoa, this is powerful right here. I hope this is not over your head tonight. We carry in our midst the revelation of God. We carry in our midst the vision of God. We carry in our midst the revelation of his love and what true love really is. We carry in our midst the revelation not only of his love, but we carry in our midst, watch this, the revelation of his will for people's lives. Tell your neighbor, this is a strong word tonight. And you know what else we carry? We carry the flame of the Holy Spirit. That's what you feel in this place. It's not goosebumps. It's not entertainment. Come on, somebody. The flame of the Holy Ghost is burning in this place tonight. You may not understand it, but I came to tell you it's the flame of the Holy Ghost. And when we get together, that's when we carry the flame of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, you may say, Pastor, why are you preaching this message tonight? I, I got to tell you, this is an important message tonight. This is an important message because the church is a lost man's last hope. How many know what I'm talking about? The church is a lost man's last hope. And people have tried many things. They've tried everything. They, they've tried counseling. They've tried connecting with professionals, counselors, and people who they could talk to about their problems. They, they, they've, they've gone out at night and they've tried to, you know, uh, look for love in all the wrong places. They've gone to every nightclub. Come on, somebody. And they were looking for Mr. Right Now. They, they found Mr. Right Now looking for Mr. Right. They've been to every nightclub. They've, they, 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 they've taken every drug. They've medicated themselves with, with everything that they can take just to ease the pain, just to take away the feelings that are breaking them down, just to deal with their past. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And they've been in every relationship, and they've been with every guy and every girl, and, you know, they've looked up old friends on Facebook. Come on, somebody. And every time, they still come up empty inside. And you know why they've come up empty? Is because they have never tasted and seen that the Lord is good. The Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. The church is their final hope. This is an important message tonight because this weekend, this Easter weekend, we received 82 brand new families. Come on, give God a praise. And you should have saw him when we were up here. And, and that, wasn't that drama powerful? Wasn't that drama anointed? And when we made the appeal and they came up, I want to tell you, I've done many altar calls. I've done them in stadiums. I've done them in conferences. I've done them in the streets. I've done them in, in this church hundreds of times. But this altar call on Sunday was one of the most powerful altar calls i ever seen. Every person who came to the altar was brand new. And when they came, they didn't come like they normally come, just with their head hanging to the side and coming up because someone told them to come and just come with me. Just see if you feel anything. Just see if you feel anything. Just come up. Come on. That's why I came to church. Just please come on. Come with me. Come on. You're going to feel something. And they come and they're like that. They didn't come like that this time. When they came to the altar, there was tears flowing from their eyes. You could feel the presence of God. You could feel the fire of the Holy Ghost breaking them free from depression, breaking them free from their past, breaking them free from the pain, breaking them free, free from the hurt and the fear. Who knows what it feels like to come out of it, to come out of the bondage, to come out of the problem, to come out of it. 
This is an important message. Because people were broken and touched by the Holy Ghost. And, you know, God always gives the church. And, and how many, we're the church. He always gives us an opportunity to make a difference, doesn't he? He always gives us a chance to make a difference. See, I, I want to give people a reason to come back. This is an important message because I want to give people a, a reason to come back. If you're here and this is your second time here, uh, Sunday is going to be your third time. And then next Wednesday, I'm going to preach next Wednesday. You say, really? Yeah, I feel like it. Come on, somebody. I'm going to preach next Wednesday, and that's going to be your fourth time. Can I hear an amen? And the Sunday after that's going to be the fifth time. What's going to happen? God's going to set a miracle in motion in your life. And you're going to go from one level to another level to another level. to a, You're going to go from breakthrough to breakthrough. Come on, somebody, from healing to healing. Because that's what God does. See, I don't want people to come to church. I want church to get into people. I'm so tired of people who come to church, but don't let the church get in them. Come on, somebody. How many of we are the church? I am the church. You are the church. Your neighbor is the church. The church is not a building. The church is not four walls and a roof, a sound system and cushy seats and, a, and, and, and you know, snacks in the cafe. That's not the church. The church is the people who are inside the building, who've been filled with the fire, who's been filled with the anointing of God. Am I in the right place here tonight? We don't want to just come to church. We need the church to get inside of us. We, we've got to give people a reason to come back. There are four P's to a powerful church, and I hope this speaks to you tonight. Four P's and, and, and four reasons why people will come back to church. Number one, write this down. This is my message. is because of the, the presence. Because of what they feel in this place. Not the presence of Christian entertainment. Not the presence of lights and Good sound and, you know, famous people standing on the platform. How many know the only person we want to see is Jesus? So I came to tell you, when you're talking about the presence of God, you're, you're not here just to be inspired or to be motivated. You're going to be inspired and you're going to be motivated. And that's going to happen from time to time. But we're not here just to be inspired and motivated. We're here to be transformed. The purpose of these services, this is good, man, I'm loving this. The purpose of these services is to be transformed. Every time we get together, we ought to be transformed. Every time we walk out, we should never walk out the same way we walked in. You might walk in depressed, you're going to walk out happy. You might walk in bound, you're going to walk out set free. You might walk in feeling low. You're going to walk out with a word from God. Come on, somebody. Clap in this place. See, we don't want, watch this, at Victory Outreach, we don't want a visitation. We want a habitation. A visitation is when something comes and leaves and comes back. We don't want that. We want this house to be full of the presence all the time. We say, Lord, you can dwell here. Lord, you can. this could be your habitation. Lord, this is the place of breakthrough. This is the place where you could be here not only on Sunday, but you could be here on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Why do people come back to a church? Because they know that he's in the house. Woo, come on and clap. He's in the house. The word of God promises it. The Bible says, Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name. There I am in the midst where two or three are gathered in my name, in my name, in his name. He says, there I am in the midst. We have much more than two or three tonight. He says, I'm in the midst. Now, when he spoke that word, he, it was the fulfillment of a promise. Ooh, this is powerful. It was the, fulfill, the, 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 the fulfillment of the promise was to fearful disciples. And he tells them. I will never leave you or forsake you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I may not be here in body, but you have the ability to access me in spirit. Woo, come on, somebody. 
When we get together and we begin to sing the songs and when we get together and we begin to worship the Lord in harmony and we get together and we hear the word together and we get together and we fellowship with one another, what takes place? All of a sudden, the presence of Jesus begins to fill the room. And I don't know about you, but I, I don't want anything else within my life. I don't want, I don't want, I don't want anything else in my life. I need the presence of Jesus in my life every single day. I need the presence of Jesus in my life every single day. If you knew the life I have and the challenges I have, you would know that I need Jesus in the morning, in the noontime, and in the evening. Is there anyone here tonight that says, I need Jesus? I need the presence of God. In Luke chapter 5, there was one day where the Bible says that they heard, they heard that they heard that he was in the house. They heard that he was in the house, and the Bible says the house was packed. How many think that the church should be packed? How many think the church every, I don't care if it's a Wednesday night, or how many think just wherever you come, whenever you come, the church should always be packed? How many, how many believe that the people should be fighting for chairs? Putting down their Bible and their purse and putting tape and say, this is my seat. Come on, somebody. And the Bible says that he was in the house and, and the church was packed and they heard he was in the house and they heard of his power and they had a friend who was paralyzed. Woo. And they grabbed the friend, these four stretcher bears grabbed the friend and they took him to the house because Jesus was in the house and they couldn't get through the front door. It was too packed. Woo. But they didn't give up. They didn't say, oh, the parking lot is full. They didn't say, oh, my God, there's a long line at the kids' check-in. They didn't say, oh, my God, I didn't get a cup of coffee and the cafe line is too long and they take too long with the coffee and I'm in the flesh. Come on, somebody. They didn't come for any of that. They said, I just got to get inside the house because Jesus is in the house. So the Bible says they went to the roof. And you talk about breaking laws, they begin to cut a hole through the roof because it says no matter what it takes, we're going to get our friend to Jesus because Jesus is able to heal him. How many believe that's what the presence of God will do to you? I want you to know that we are a vision-driven church, but we are a presence-driven church. Yes, we have a vision, but we know that that vision cannot come to pass without the presence and the power of the Holy Ghost in the church. And I came to tell you, we, we need Jesus in everything we do. We, we need Jesus in everything we do. We need Jesus in our services. We need Jesus in our city life groups. We need Jesus in our ministries. We need Jesus in our men's and women's home. We need Jesus in our discipleship home. We need Jesus over there at the hub. We need Jesus in our ministry meetings. We need Jesus in our staff. I don't know about you, but I want to be in a church where Jesus is over the church. Powerful church. The second P that makes a church powerful is not only the, the presence, it's the people. It's you and I. Touch your neighbor and tell them you, you're powerful. What makes a church powerful are, are the people of God who bring refuge to the hurting. What makes the church powerful are the people who can be a covering for those who are suffering. People who don't ignore you. People who aren't clicked up. Well, we don't got no clicks here. <laughs> Us four no more. I'll tell you this. Uh, Church should never feel like lunchtime at high school. I believe the people who sit on this side should know the people that sit on this side. And the people who sit in the back should know the people that sit in the front. How many want to be a part of a church just like that? It's the people. Someone say the people. See, people bring relief to our life. 
people bring aid to those who are weak who, or have weaknesses in their life. Anybody come to the house of God and when you came, you had weaknesses. Can I get any honest people here? You had weaknesses, boy. And if you have a weakness tonight, you're in the right place. If you have a drug problem, you're in the right place. Man. Just if you drink more than you should, if you lock yourself alone and drink, you're in the right place. We serve a God that has raised up a people that know how to bring relief. See, we need people. We need people in the church who will be a covering and a refuge to those who are hurting. Proverbs 18, 24 says, one who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin. But there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Proverbs 13, 20 says this, walk with the wise and become wise. For a companion of folios, I mean, it doesn't say that. I'm from the hood, too, y'all. <laughs> For a companion of fools suffers harm. But look at this one. Proverbs 27, 9 in the living says, a sweet friendship refreshes the soul. What are people looking for? They're looking for the presence, but you know what? They're looking for people. When... when when I came to Victor Outreach, I wasn't looking for a church. I was looking for a people. Because you should have seen the people that I had. Come on, talk to me. I, I came to Victor Outreach. I, I know it was called Victor Outreach. I know they had a vision, but I wasn't looking for a church. I wasn't looking for the children's ministry. I wasn't looking for, you know, good lights and sound. I was looking for a people. Because you had to know the people that I was rolling with. Anyone with me here today? Those people caused me to suffer. What are people looking for? You know what they're looking for? They're looking for people. They're looking for pure and undefiled relationship. They, they live in a dog-eat-dog -dog world. Am I the only one? In the workplace, it's dog-eat-dog. In the schools, it's dog eat dog. Even on social media, you know, they're, they're, they're talking to each other and they're cussing each other out. And then they see each other at a you know, burrito stand and they start fighting. You know, it's weird. Come on, somebody. It's a dog eat dog world. And I understand that world. I, I, I know that when I, what I came out of was a dog eat dog world, I remember the treachery, I remember the fake friends. I remember the lies and the gossip. I remember the betrayal. I remember the backstabbing. I remember the shadiness. I remember other people trying to be with my girl. It's too real for you? And I didn't like it. Come on, somebody. And it got me in a lot of fights. Come on, somebody. And one time it got me jumped. But thank God when I came to the Victory Outreach, I found some people that had the answer. I remember the hate. I remember the anger. I remember the fights. But when I came to the church house, when I came, not only did I find the presence, but I found pure relationship. People weren't trying to tear me down. People were trying to lift me up. I'm preaching better than you're saying amen, man. I'm liking this message. People didn't try to tear me down. Yes, they told me the truth, but it wasn't for my bad. It was for my good. Yes, they told me to change, but it wasn't so that I could go backwards. It's so that I could keep, keep going forward towards my destiny, towards my breakthrough. Come on, somebody. I thank God for those people. I am the man I am today because of those people. When, when others gave up on me, they didn't give up on me. They kept praying for me. They kept speaking to me. They didn't change their phone number. They didn't block me on Facebook. Come on, somebody. That's the church that we need to be. Are the pure relationships where are the trustworthy people where are the ones that will pick you up when you're feeling down 
Where are the ones that have called you that you can call them at 2 o'clock in the morning and they'll wake up and they'll pray for you and they'll counsel you? Where are the ones that will pick you up in the middle of the night and take you to the men's home? Where are the ones that say, man, listen, man may walk away from you, but me and God, we're never going to walk away from you. That's the church that has power. Oh, I'm preaching in this place. That's the church that has power. Those are the people that God has called Victory Outreach to be. Yes, we seem impossible. Yes, it seems like we, 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 we're not going to make it. Yes, it seems like all the odds are against us. But if you are here tonight, you came into a church that has been defying the odds for over 50 years. They said we never make it. They said we never last. But look at us here today because we put our trust in God and we stood close to one another. And look what the Lord has done. Tell your neighbor, be that friend. We're the ones that will correct you in love and a pure motive. People want something pure. And how many know we have what they need? Let me go on. Number three, power. The four P's of a powerful church. Number three is power. Somebody say power. No, say it like you got it. Say power. power. One more time. Power. power. People need power. Money doesn't give you power. Influence doesn't give you power. I don't care how many Twitter followers you have, it doesn't give you power. Only the Holy Spirit can give you power. And the power that you gain is the power, watch this, to change your situation. To, to change things. To move mountains. I got a mountain here. I need power to move. Come on, somebody. I got a situation here. I need power to. Things aren't working away. Someone say power. That's what the church has. That's what the people of God have. They have power. The power to go from one level to another level to another level to another level, even no matter what the devil's trying to do to you and what, the, what people are trying to do to you and what the world is trying to do to you, you have power to crush your enemies. Ooh. I'm just trying to help somebody tonight. We need power. And that can only happen through something called faith. To be a mountain-moving people, you got to have faith. That's what we need to train people in. In, in their faith. When, when you come here to church, you know, your car doesn't work. I can't fix your phone. I can't fix your car. I can't teach you about those things, but I can teach you how to grow your faith. And when you grow your faith, you grow your power. There are four levels of faith. Number one, there, there, there's to have faith in his work. People who come to the house of God, they don't understand these things. They don't understand these words. But in the book of John 14, 12, he tells his disciples, believe the works you have seen. Greater works than these you shall do if you believe the works you have seen. He says, whatever you ask, come on, somebody, I will do. See, if you can't believe for yourself, then just believe what God is showing you. You don't believe that you can get set free from drugs? Well, you need someone, you need to see someone that's been set free. They're in the house. If God has set you free from anything, I want you to stand right now and I want you to give God the biggest praise or the biggest shout. Look at all that. Because you see, we've seen people, oh, this is good. We've seen people who are in worse condition than you change. Come on, somebody. Pastor, I did tell you, he, he was hustling gas for a fix. He used to ride a pink beach cruiser. Come on, somebody. But look at him today. He's a man of God. He's blessed. God has raised him up. Believe what you see. The second level of faith is faith in his word. Roman 10, 17 says faith come by hearing. 
and hearing by the word of God. Come on, somebody. It comes by hearing. It comes by the word of God. That's why you have to be here. Mm. Where are you going to get this kind of stuff? You're not going to get the Padres game. No, and I, I'm not. And I'm actually, I'm a Dodger fan, so I don't like the Padres. But you're not going to get it there. You're not going to get it at, you know, a school play. You're not going to get it at the park on Sunday. Where are you going to build your faith? You're going to build your faith when you position your life under the preaching of the word. I'm trying to help you today. The word is the foundation that produces faith. Listen, to have faith, how many want to grow their faith? How many want to grow their faith? Then, then listen clear to me when I tell you that you can only grow your faith through sharp hearing. You, you, you've got to lean in. You, you've got to come to church and you've got to lean in. And, and, and you're not going to grow your faith by sleeping in the house of God. Woo! You're not going to grow your faith by sleeping in your Bible study. You're not going to grow your faith by sleeping in the chapel in the home. You're only going to grow your faith when you have sharp hearing and you open up your ears and you let the word of God get inside of you and let it begin to feed your spirit. And oh. Learn about the miracles. Learn about the power. Learn about deliverance. Learn about angels. Come on, somebody. Learn about how the Holy Spirit moved in the book of Acts. And as you get it inside of you, your faith begins to grow. What's happening when you're here, man? Your faith is being built up. This word that's preached is building your faith. Tell your neighbor, we're building your faith. How can you grow if you're, fa if you're constantly distracted by media, how can you grow your faith if you're more interested in the Kardashians than the Holy Ghost? Now, I'm not saying you can't watch. I'm saying, listen, check your meter. Check your scales, people. I'm defeated. Well, turn off the Kardashians. <laughs> well, I'm not feeling so good. Turn off YouTube for a little while. Well, man, I feel like the devil's you know, kicking me up and down the street. Well, then get off Facebook and get off Instagram and open up this Bible and put your body and your ears under a word and let the word begin to build your faith. The third level of faith is not only faith in the word, but watch this. This is heavy. Faith in the word behind the word. I don't know about you, but when I, when I come to the house of God, I don't, I don't want just a word. Why, 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 why do people come back to church? Preachers hear this. You, you, preachers got to be hearing this. They don't come back just to hear a dry word, a logos word. They come because they want to hear a word behind the word. They don't want to hear a preacher. They don't want to hear a scripture. They want to hear a word behind the word. They want to hear a prophetic word. They want to hear a living word. Oh, man. They want to hear a word that pertains to their situation. See, some of you are coming to life because you say, man, I hit a wall. Well, here it is. Boom. Listen to the word behind the word. God is growing your faith. You're getting, you're growing. You're getting stronger. <laughs> faith is when you come to hear the word behind the word. Look what the scripture says. If my word abides in you, you will ask for whatever you need and I will give it to you. In John 15, it says, if my word abides in you and I abide in you, you will produce much fruit. Understand that when you come to this place, God is going to speak a specific word to your situation that's going to break you out of that season. He's going to speak to you a specific, which is not just the Bible. It's, not, it's a prophetic word in the spirit realm. Now, if you come sleeping, you ain't getting nothing. But if you come to the house of God and you come in and you're not here and you're not on your phone and you're not like that. Okay, if you're like that, you're going to get nothing. You're just here. You're just wasting an hour and a half of your time. But when you come to the house of God and you sit there and you sit on the edge of your seat and you say, I came to hear a word from the Lord. I came to tell you that word could pull you out of the situation you are in right now. Is there anyone here tonight that has ever heard a word behind the word? How are we going to take 
our faith leveled up? How are we going to change the atmosphere in our church? How are we going to see these services go to another level? We need leaders that come in, not just to hear a word, but they come in to hear a word behind the word. They come in to tap into a prophetic word. They come to tap into a Rima word. They're not just here playing church, doing the sign of the crowd, waiting to drink some coffee. Oh, that's dead. Not Victory Outreach. When you come to Victory Outreach, you need a word behind the word. I need a word for my marriage. I need a word for my kids. I need a word for my body. I need a word for my health. I need a word for my money. I need a word for my calling. In Victory Outreach, we come to this place, and God is able to give you a word that will change your life. Because now when you pray, you're not just praying the word. You're praying the word behind the word. Lord, when I was in the service, you told me my son was going to get saved. Oop, you caught it. Lord, when I was in the service, you told me that my wife was going to get saved. Ooh, you caught it. Lord, when I was in the service, you told me my body was going to get healed. Hey, come on, son. Is this too deep for you? Is this too deep for you? See, 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 people tell me sometimes, they say, Pastor, Pastor, you're, you're a preacher's preacher. They tell me that. But that's not the reality. I'm not a preacher's preacher. It's not me, it's them. It's not what I'm saying, it's what they're pulling out. When Jesus was going through the crowd, come on somebody, everybody was touching him, everybody was around him, but there was a woman that had a wish, an issue of blood. And she heard that Jesus was coming through town and she broke through the crowd and she said, if I can only touch the hem of his garment. Oh, I'm preaching better than you're saying amen. And she touched the hem of his garment. And then he said, someone touched me. And then Peter said, what are you talking about? See, he only had the word. What are you talking about? There's all kinds of people, hundreds of people touching you. He says, no, they touched me in a different way. They touched me in a way where I had to release some power into their life. Is there anybody here that wants the power of the Holy Ghost? Gotta pull it out. Tell your neighbor, pull it out. This is a necessary word. Because if you came on Easter, you, you're gonna come Sunday. And you're gonna come Wednesday. And then that why? And every time you come, you're not gonna come in here and, and try to act religious, homie. You're gonna come here ready to pull something. You're like that woman. You say, I need a breakthrough. I, I need a breakthrough. You, you're going to park your car. You're going to, I don't care if you got to park all the way down the street. And, and you're going to be all, so you care your hair is doing the gangster lean. And, and you're going to get out and you're going to run. Come on, somebody. You, you're going to play something upbeat. Come on. You're going to run. You, don't play funeral music now. You're going to run. Come on, somebody. We're not having a funeral. We're going to pull some power. Matthew, come on up here. You, we're going to pull some out. You're going to run out of your sir, out of your car, and you can say, I got to get into the house of God because of the presence, because of the people, and because of the power that is in this place. Woo! He says, that's what I'm going to do. That's what's going to keep people coming back. Preachers, when you get up here, don't give a word. Give a word behind the word. That's why if you're a preacher, you got to pray. You got to prepare. You got to be ready. What's the last thing? You can be seated. Faith in God himself. <laughs> when you hit this level of faith, this is when you got the faith. Numbers 23, 19 says... God is not a man that he should lie. Power. God is not a man that he should lie. You know, it gets to a point where you don't even need a word. You just know that God is not a man. So the doctor says, The doctor says, uh, it doesn't look like you're going to make it. You say, oh, no, no, God's not a man. 
God said, I'm going to be healed. By his stripes, I am healed. God spoke to me. Come on, somebody. How many want to see their faith go to another level? Come on, how many want to see their faith go to another level? God's not a man that he should lie. That's the highest type of faith. The highest type of faith, watch this, is when you remove all of the limits off of God. No matter what man tells you, no matter what people tell you, no matter what the world tells you, no matter what the news tells you, you say, God is not a man that he should lie. I'm taking off the limits. He's a miracle working God. He's a supernatural God. He's a God of breakthrough. Woo, come on and clap in this place. God said it, that settles it. Remove the limits. I feel such a, a spirit in here. I feel like this word is so necessary because when people come to our church, they're not coming with ordinary needs. They're not coming with ordinary needs. They're coming, and many of the people even here tonight need breakthrough in their lives. They need deliverance. They need to have chains taken off of them. They need restoration in their marriage. They need their kids to get, get it together. Can I hear an amen? But how many know if we have the presence, the people, and the power, then the fourth thing, and finally, we can see people start moving in their purpose. Come on, clap for the Lord, I'm done. Come on, clap for the Lord, I'm done. Purpose. The presence, the people, the power, and now people could start moving in their purpose. See, you weren't created to be a gang member. You weren't created to be depressed. You were not created to have a broken family. You were not created to live in defeat your entire life. I was not created to be a fourth-generation alcoholic. I was not created to die in the streets from a knife wound or a gunshot. I was not created, you know, to have three baby mamas. Talk to me some. If you have three baby mamas, don't get mad at me, but that wasn't my destiny. I got one baby mama, I married her, and we've been married 22 years. That's what I was created for. Come on, somebody, clap in this place. I wasn't created to be struggling financially my entire life. I was not created to stay stuck in my neighborhood, in my city. Somehow, when God saved me, he already saw and already planted in me the purpose he had for me. But if I was going to get to that purpose... go. Look at me go. Look at you go. Look, look at how you're moving today. You don't move like the man you used to be. You don't move like the woman you used to be. You don't look. Come on. You're moving, boy. And you're looking better than you've ever done. You're stronger than you've ever been. Come on, somebody. And that's what we got to we gotta preach. We got to let them know that we need the presence. We need the people. We need the power. What a good praise. I'm done preaching. Come on, really praise him right now. Come on, really give him a good, good round of applause. I feel like that was a necessary word tonight. Come on, praise him like you've got a purpose. Come on, praise him like you're grateful that you got this word. He wants to take your faith to another level. So what 
I want to do tonight as I play a song, I want to pray for those of you tonight that you say, I need my faith to go to another level. I, I need to take it higher. If, if, if all you can believe for is what you see, that's just the start. That's fine. But begin to say, I'm going to put my life under the word. I'm going to position myself under the word. Wherever the word is being preached in Victor Arch, I'm going to be there. If it's being preached in the home, I'm just gonna, if it's being preached about it, and you, and you can never get enough word. When I got saved, I read the entire Bible in four months. I never missed a church service. I never missed a gathering. Do not forsake the assembly of yourself because within that assembly, we carry the power of change. And if you are here tonight, say, Pastor, that word was powerful and it was for me. I want you to come to this altar tonight, and I want you to ask the Lord to build your faith. I want you to come from all over this place and take your faith to another level. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Take your faith to another level. Say, Lord, I can't hang out on this level of faith any longer. I, I got to go higher tonight. I got to go higher tonight. I'm ready to go higher tonight. I received the key tonight. I received the key tonight. If you do, come to this altar and, and begin to just say, Lord,